Thank you very much for joining this fantastic Thursday morning. Good morning and welcome to Sports Central. It's actually live and exclusive to Spectrum Television. My name is Isaac, Isaac, and I'm quite excited to be back on the show this morning. Well, there's a lot on the plate. We'll take a look at the latest stories from the Dallas Open. It's a prep-up tournament, Grand Slam of the Year. We talk about the biggest losers and winners from the competition. We'll travel to Abu Dhabi as well and talk about the stories from the Mubadala Abu Dhabi Open. We'll take a look at the latest winners and the losers from that particular competition. Well, um, the NBA is promising to be quite exciting right now. Uh, today, particularly, is the deadline day for misses and trade deals. And shockingly, Kevin Durant is leaving the Brooklyn Nets just days after Kari Ivan left to join the Dallas Mavericks. We we'll talk about football as well. Manchester United were in action last night to take you through how the things turned out at the end of the day well before we get into all of this talk let's take you through some new stories making rounds in sport trap up it's time welcome well we begin from tennis this morning who keeps rising with a sharp of offset in dallas who is in being in the dallas open as the newest member of the top 100 in the ATP rankings. After becoming the second Chinese man to achieve this milestone, the 23-year-old is showing no signs of slowing down. Yesterday in Dallas, Wu defeated Denis Shapovalov 7-6-6-4 to advance to his first tour-level quarterfinal. The victory against the world number 27 is the biggest win of the Chinese star's career by measure of the ATP rankings. While in the women's draw, Zen Kun Wen reached her first quarterfinal of the year with a 7-6-6-1 defeat to uh, Yelena Ostapenko at the Mobadala Abu Dhabi Open after saving three set points in the first set. It was Zeng's second win over Ostapenko in his many meetings, having already defeated the Latvian 6-3-3-6-6-4 in the first round of last year's US Open. Zeng would next face either number one seed Daria Kasaskina or Jill Tekman as she beats to reach the last four in Abu Dhabi. While talking basketball this morning, Kari Ivan scored 24 points in his Dallas debut and the Mavericks defeated the LA Clippers 110-104 this morning. The eight-time All-Star was traded to the Mavs on Sunday from the Brooklyn Nets. He was part of the 13 love sports early in the game, scoring eight points on a jumper and back-to-back -back three pointers. Ivan had four rebounds and five assists in 37 minutes of play. And of course, what amounted to a dress race of before injured Luka Doncic returned to give the Mavs a powerhouse backcourt. Doncic missed his third straight game because of a heel contusion. He joined the team in LA Lakers and it's under discussion whether he would play on Friday or Saturday when the Mavs attack Rabetu for a back-to-back. -back. We're talking about some meters and trade deals. The Phoenix Suns are acquiring 13-time NBA All-Star Kevin Durant in a blockbuster trade with the Brooklyn Nets, according to ESPN. Phoenix is sending Michael Bridges, Cam Johnson, Jay Crowder, four first-round picks and 2028 pick swap to Brooklyn, according to sources. The picks are in 2023, 2025, 2027, and 2029 unprotected. The Suns are also getting forward T.J. Warren in the trade. According to sources, Kevin Durant wanted a move, and the new Suns majority owner, Matt Ishbiai, pushed to get a deal done on the eve of today's transfer deadline day. While well, talking football, QBR defender Leon Balogun is racing against time to be fit for Nigeria's African qualifiers against Guinea-Bissau in March due to injury problems. The 34-year-old defender has been injured since November last year in a championship game against Huddersfield and was due to return in February. However, reports in England indicating that his three-month layoff could be extended well beyond March when Nigeria played Guinea-Bissau in a doubleheader African qualifiers. Last month, West London Sports revealed that Bologo had seen a specialist about his calf injury and would green light to step up his training but is yet to resume with his club and it is unlikely if he would be involved when the Continental Qualifying Series resume with Nigeria facing Guinea-Bissau in back-to-back -back matches on March 20 and March 27. Well, these are the stories we're tracking right now. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll get Blyden. Blyden, by the way, looks very spoofing this particular morning and together we'll do justice to what's in the plate. Please stick around. Right back in the Jiffy.
Hello, welcome. It's another wonderful day to talk sports. And I'm ready. I do not know if you're ready. I think Marizona is ready too. And we want to see the best way to x-ray what's happening in the world of tennis and also what's happening in the world of basketball. Big story from a footballing point of view. Yesterday, we saw Manchester United slum. 2-2, it ended in against Leeds United, but it couldn't work out the way they planned. Disappointing outlook from a Manchester United point of view, but a good recovery from Leeds United. That's where to talk about and to begin the show. It will be tennis all the way from the start, but Marizona for company. Marizona, so good to have you on the show. Well, Blyden, um, without saying much, mm. you look like a manager who just got a new job in PSG. You look so good this morning. You look so good. I, 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 I want to name you twice. <laughs> I want, to, I, want, I want to just name you twice, maybe blind and blind, or blind, or came, we came, or something. But you look actually very good at the Blazers. I think there's something about Ashkelon that okay. makes it look very good, actually. But it's good to be back, by the way. Uh, and I think I'm ready because with what, with what I'm saying, actually, I think we're ready. And I, I want to tell you one thing: you are in for it. <laughs> well, I, well, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm quite, I'm quite aware. Good to have you on the show, yeah. anyway, Marizona. Let's start with tennis and see what the big outlook in the world of tennis is. We'll begin with what's happening at the Dallas Open. That's a name called Wu. Wu is a rising star who defeated Shapovalov in Dallas Open round of 16, showing dominance in Dallas. A shocking result at the end of it because you look at Shapovalov, he's been a decent, decent tennis player, but couldn't have a good result in the first instance against Wu, Marizona. Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, Blyden, particularly Wu, a young star, mm. you know, he, he, he refused to be Wu. Uh, by Gary Shapovalov <laughs> yesterday was quite a performance. He's just 23 years of age, gradually getting into the top 100. He's the newest member mm. of the top 100 in the ATP rankings. And of course, he's number 97 as we speak to you. Got a fantastic win against Gary Shapovalov yesterday. Well, it's um, slow and steady rise for the youngster. There's a lot to be expected from him in the coming days. But once you defeat a key player, a big name player like Denis Shapovalov, clearly, we should take you seriously. And that's the story for this young man who is in being just the second Chinese man to crack into the top 100 in the last two, three years. And it shows you how much quality you know, is, is gradually building particularly. So it was good to see him get a win yesterday. But, um, you know, the competition gets even tough as the days go by. Yeah. So he faces even some more tough competition in the coming days. But so far, so good. I think I'm quite impressed with his performance so far in competition. It was a 6-7, or rather a 7-6, 6-4 win for Yi Bing Wu mm. from China. Quality, quality tennis player, but disappointment from Shapovalov's point of view. How disappointing were you, Marizona? Let's start from there. Well, like, Looking at the stocks of Shapovalov, yeah. quite experienced. Recent times at a tall level, yeah. we've seen the experienced player slump, mm -hmm. and Shapovalov had to fall for Wu. How disappointing was it? I think it was disappointing, particularly when you look at you know the kind of stocks and you know the kind of player we know Shapovalov to be at least in 2020, 2021, particularly. But the last two years, it's not been the same case for Shapovalov. We saw his performances across tall level titles at the Grand Slams. He's not just been able to nick it, you know, and then he loses most often and always to young stars. And that's been the story for him, man. You just cannot pinpoint the ideal, you know, the problem he's facing right now as a tennis player. And that has been the story for the man over time. So I think uh, we will just capitalize on. The, the story of the bad form of yeah. Danny Shapovalov so far so good because you look at the records right now he's just gotten I think two wins in, in his last seven outings and that's a sad story you know for a player who for once used to be a top ranked player so that's a sad story for me but I look at Wu and I think that he's the positive for to take from this particular game looks like a, a rising star that can actually do very much better you know in the next coming of days so well, let's see what happens to this young star so far so I think he's done a fantastic job well there was another exciting event that took place it had to be JJ Wu at the Dallas Open, who showed some dominance in the especially when the event is being held in the US. He showed dominance, having some decent wins against Albert JJ Wolf, won it 6 3 7 6 and he showed dominance. Also, but we get to talk about Francis Tiafo too. Definitely. Francis Tiafo was decent mm. on the day as the US citizens and the US superstars are doing quite well in the Dallas Open. Not the biggest of competition, but it was Francis Tiafo. Clark Dominizer took the game 58 minutes yeah. for a win. Massive 6 1 6 3 yeah. win for them. Yeah. Talk about the US uh, players and how they're performing in Dallas. Yeah, it's good, definitely. You know, it's their home ground. Mm. They're expected to do as much as possible. Basically, Tiafo defeated a countryman in Mackenzie McDonald 6 1 6 3 to get a win and he faces yet another US man in JJ Wolf in the next round of the competition. Well, I think it's good for the young stars. Francis Tiafo, we saw his performance um, 
over the course of uh, the end of last year you know at the atp cup competition the davis cup and of course a few other tournaments where he was quite fantastic and was good and he's taking that form all through to the new year he was not entirely one of the biggest players at the at the year open early this year but of course he's been able to get himself back on track and Big build these blocks of consistency. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing how he partners up, how he get, uh, plays against JJ Wolf because JJ Wolf is not also a pushover. He's been quite fantastic over time. We've seen his performance against top opponents over time. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this thing is going down. But I think the Americans are the top favorite to get this one in the bag. And Francis Tiafo for me looks like one of those players that I think if things go equal, he should get this title in the bag. Well, the Americans are doing the magic when it has to do with what's happening at the Dallas Open in the US. Mm. But there was another event that took place, and it took place in Montpellier, France. Decent, decent event. They call it the Open Suit de France. Difficult game it was for some of the superstars, but decent win. Let's begin with a man called Yannick Sina, the Italian. Yannick Sina had a clear advantage in his game. Mm. It was a round of 16 games in the court dummy quest, and the incident was the fact that his opening for Sovex withdrew from the game. The game yeah. never took place. And good advantage for Yannick Sina moving forward. But we'll get to talk about Yannick Sina and the performances we're expecting him to bring in this particular competition. But the next game also was a youngster, 20-year-old from France, Arthur Fields, having some decent performance. 6-3-6-4, he defeated a top star, Batista Erger, the Canadian, Marizona. Yeah. Difficult game it was for Bat Batista, but we've seen these happen time and time again. Uncertainties for the big stars, and it happened in this one. I think one key feature we've seen in tour level tournaments this year it's, it's the young stars. Yeah. First of all, of course, um, the homegrown young stars putting mm. up. You look at you know in the Dal in Dallas, it's JJ Wolf, it's Francis Tiafo, mm. it's Mackenzie McDonald, Americans. So and you go you go to France, it's Arthur Fields. There's also a young star Greg Rock, who's also qualified for the next round of the competition. He's a young French star, and they've been doing a fantastic job. But kudos to Arthur Fields. He, I thought I saw his first game, I yeah. think it was just a few days ago. He was quite fantastic. Put up a really good performance to get his win and qualify for the next round of competition and taking that energy, defeating a top player in Roberto Batista Aga. Now, if you want to talk about the top three French um Spanish players in tennis right now, after talking about Carlos Zacaras and Rafael Nadal, the next thing that comes to mind is Roberto Batista Aga before Pablo Carrido Buster. Yeah. So it shows you how much of a win this uh was uh, for the youngs are of Fuse. And I'm I'm watching his progress is Building those blocks of consistency as much as possible and looks like a youngster that can go very far. We've, we've rarely seen, you know, um, young stars from French, from France rather, come through and get to that top level. But I think Arthur feels the way he's played has got loads of arsenals, loads of energy, loads of potential to go very far. And so far, so good. I think I'm impressed. Well, exciting stories still happening in the mm -hmm. world of tennis. Let's look at just one more from the Montpellier mm -hmm. Open. Looking at Davidovich for Kina, yeah. Arizona. Had a good result at the end of it. But it had to be that of Hugo Hobbit, Hugo Hobbit withdrawing from this particular event because of injury. Yeah. Couldn't finish the third set. But first set, Hugo Hobbit had six massive one victory. The second set was, was quite close for Fokina. Look at it, it was 7-6 win for Fokina. Mm. But at the end of it, the third set was where it happened and Hugo Hobbit withdrew. Difficult game for Fokina. Yeah. He must be thankful he had a win in this one because Hugo we drew from this particular game yeah you know sometimes uh, people's misfortune can you know turn out to mm -hmm. not, not entirely trying to you know uh, justify what happened on the yeah. night but sad story for Hugo Humbert was quite fantastic you know he's gradually getting himself back on track last year he went through loads of injury consent from you know several tournaments to you know he came to this year with a renewed hope that he was, he was going to participate frequently and consistently this year but that's not the story for the youngster but uh, for the man rather got an injury in that particular game well kudos to you know, for Kina, all things being equal, Humbert would have gotten that win in the back because he led the first set and, of yeah. course, dropped the second set, but was on course to get a third set win. And that was the story, but it was good to see for Kina, you know, qualify, you know, on the basis of sheer luck. Let's look forward to seeing how he performs consequently and, of course, how far he can go in this competition. Well, quickly, we we'll move swiftly as fast as possible. Let's get to what's happening in the WTA games. Mm -hmm. It had to be the Abu Dhabi games, the open day, Mubadala, they call it. It was a fast shocker that everyone had to think about. On the other hand, we talk about Arnett Contavet, who had her shocker in this particular one, but not enough to look at Arnett Contavet alone, but also have to look at a certain name who's been a rising star from China, Zheng Giwen. She defeated Jelena Ostapenko. Ostapenko is a fifth seeded player in this competition, but the results were 7-6, 6-1 in favor of Zheng, the Chinese girl. Shocker it was. We've talked yeah. about Ostapenko this season. Yeah. And we've seen the performances even Definitely. at the Australian Open. Yeah. Getting to the quarterfinals, quarter finals, yeah. not good enough at the Abu Dhabi Open. I think uh, it's a case of Zheng being quite brilliant. Yeah. She's just 20. 
young star gradually building blocks of consistency i've watched the game myself i know oh my she was brilliant oh. particularly you know she hit you know the forehands and she you know her set games were top notch particularly and she was just too strong and too powerful you know for the more experienced ostapenko in this particular game well for ostapenko i think it'll be quite sad because you look at her performance at the yossi open you know went all the way to the quarterfinals although she lost but before that she's been a fantastic performer she's been consistent from last year but was not just able to match up the energy and the pace that this young star you know from china zeng was bringing to the game and it was quite fantastic well for zeng i love to see what she she built from this because you know from in 2021 she was world number 141 mm. 2022 she climbed into the top 30 and that she's just 20 as i said well she would have to you know choose to if she wants to be a coco golf yeah. a normie osaka mm. an ego swatek or an emara dukano i hope she becomes an well, ego not the biggest of brands you're mentioning here well, yeah, Liga yeah that, that, that's what i'm saying right i'm mm. glad rather i hope she becomes an ego swatek because coco golf not entirely the best of performance you look at Raducano, injuries here and there, changing coaches. And then you look at Naomi Osaka, well, Naomi Osaka is becoming a lady, a, a mother, very soon. So the only key performer in that circle is Ego Swiatek. And I hope that she takes motivation from Swiatek and gets to her level where she becomes a key performer for her side. There were other wins for the likes of Shelby Rogers, who defeated Annette Contavert in this particular competition. Belinda Bensic, the Olympic champion, also won her game in this level of competition. It's the round of 16 at the Mubadala. It's my zone. I just x-ray one more time. Yeah. The competition in Mubadala has it lived up to the expectations? Shockers here and there. Yeah, I think so. I think I think it's lived up to the billing, particularly. You know, we saw Putin Seva defeating big opponents. Daniel yeah. Collins is already out of this competition. You know, um, uh, unfortunately, Ons Jabo is on here due to an injury. But yeah. look at yesterday, was yeah. the particularly was pushed out of the competition. It's a case of young stars gradually getting themselves back on track, and it's good. You know, but we still see a few big names. You know, in Ellis Mertens has, has been pushed out of competition yeah, as well. So it's basically a case of young stars and players who are ready to, you know, get there. That's where the story for me, Blind. And I think it makes a lot of sense, particularly because Abu Dhabi has always been, you know, a place where young stars thrive. And that's where the story so far. That's the story, but it has to do with tennis. We move to basketball immediately in the NBA. Big stories making round in the world of basketball. A shocker, but the headline says, according to sources, Sons land Katie. Kevin Durant and Black Booster net deal. Let's start from them, Arizona. Yeah. Um, KD moving. We <clears throat> talked about it when Kyrie having left um, the Brooklyn Nets side. Next, yeah. And now KD. KD was definitely going to move. You yeah. did say probably you advised him to stay with the likes of Cam. Yeah. But it didn't happen. He's moved and moved straight to the Suns. Now, you know when you called him KD, I think I think you have a personal relationship with him. <laughs> <laughs> is, Kevin Durant, yes, I did K say so too. Katie's like um like a nickname particularly. Well, well that's how the world gets to know you. Yeah, when Katie. you do so well and they abbreviate your name, Katie, that's you know, it. You know you're doing very well. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'll be very BU, Blind Who Came or something. Okay. It was good, it was good to see, you know, um, Durant's leave. We talked about this yesterday. I wonder you. what the abbreviated Marizona. Well, Isaac, Isaac. Isaac. Maybe double I or something. I, I. Double <laughs> <laughs> well, for Kevin Durant or oh. Katie, as the case may be, I think um the shame is on uh, the face of Brooklyn Nets because I think this clearly spells out their intentions okay. and their flow and the trajectory as a, as a franchise because you, you're losing your two young stars, your two key stars rather, to your opponents, you know, to your rivals. How, how sensible is that? Basically, okay. and then, yes, you know, they started the season on, on, on a very, st uh, the most staggering notes, basically, but they got themselves back on track. And these two players were instrumental in your team getting themselves back into the top four of the conference, basically. So what's so difficult in keeping them i think this also spells out the fact that maybe you know the brooklyn Nets board are not intentional about winning trophies and these players have left for teams that are serious about winning trophies look at carry ivan in his first game this morning had 24 massive points was the biggest performer on the night for his side i mean as he went on to defeat the team and then kevin durant as well he goes to the phoenix Suns, partners with key performers we're talking about devin booker yeah. we're talking chris paul you know, about going there you know and it shows you that you know clearly the phoenix Suns will change the trajectory from maybe being, being around to winning trophies because they now have some super talented players in their team so i think the, the shame is on the Brooklyn is because is it like, two young stars is it an instant impact yeah with the sons because you look at the, f the fortunes of the sons yeah it's dwindled this year in particular last yeah. season they were quite decent the best team in the regular season but this season is not the same story mm. now kevin duran being mm. part of that mix yeah. they're going to mix things really definitely you mix things but i i think you know, if they are fit, because you look at, you know, the Phoenix Suns, one reason why they've been poor this season has been the fact that the key players have been out from Chris Paul to injuries, yeah. you know, to um, Devin Booker. Devin Booker missed more than two months, you know, before coming back just a couple of days ago. Oh. So Kevin Durant is also an injury-stricken player. You know, he doesn't guarantee you 30 games a season, and that's a thing of concern for the Phoenix Suns. But holistically, if these players can be fit as much as possible, 
definitely the Phoenix Suns will go very, very far because Devin Booker is here dropping points, giving us his Kevin Durant is over here dropping those points. And I think I see this team competing very well next season. Well, let's see what's happening next season because opportunities are different for the Suns now with Kevin Durant joining them. But we begin with what happened with Kyrie Irving and the Clippers. Big stories, big features, big wins at the end of it. It was the Dallas Mavericks having an away win against the LA Clippers. Early morning asked it was 110 in favor of the Dallas Mavericks and 104 for the Clippers who played at home. But a key feature was Kevin, not Kevin Durant now, Kyrie, Kyrie Irving. Irving. Kyrie Irving hitting massive 24 points. Just a few days ago, he was traded to the, uh, to the Mavericks and when you don't have Doncic back, you begin to think what happens when Doncic is back. And that's the story. My zona. Yeah. Shocker, shocker, shocker it is. New trades, big games, and they're turning up to the party. Kyrie Ivan. Instant impacts, Bladen. Instant impacts. So Gary Ivan left, you know, the Nets and has not looked back. He's come to the Mavericks. 24 massive points on his first game for the team. And he was the biggest performer on the night. It shows you how key this man is going to be yeah. for, you know, um, uh, the Mavericks going forward. Look at Doncic miss out of the game due to a couple of injuries. You know how to sit back but right now it's good to know that the Mavericks have got somebody they can turn to mm. in case Dutchies is out and that's been you know the trajectory for some big teams you have to have a backup plan every single time a partner every single time just in Tatum is out Brown comes in yeah you know that's my story for every single team so I think that's basically why the Mavericks have to splash the cash to get um, Kyrie Irving because they know that he's coming in with so much quality mm. and it's evident already after his first game for the team quite fantastic and of course um, it would um, propel the team to greater height. Of course, we know that they'll be chasing a playoff uh, qualification this particular season and then put position to get this particular one too. I think it makes a lot of sense, you know, for me. And kudos, you know, to my everyone, Kari Ivan, according to the team. You know, Belly had two games to trip, yeah, yeah. but he's already dropping points and that shows you quality and more quality for this man. Quality and more quality according to Marizona and the opportunity is totally different. But here, let's move to another game, looking at the Warriors. The Golden State Warriors has been a little here, a little there, but it was the Trailblazers who had dominant performance against the Golden State Warriors. It was a 125 massive win, not massive this time, just three point gap to 122 win over the Golden State Warriors. Let's talk about the Trailblazers. Yeah. This time they're not trailing. Well, they're actually blazing. Well, <laughs> well uh, they were a little trailed and blazed, <laughs> right? Because he had a triple double, mm. 33 points. 11, 11 assists and 10 rebounds was a holistic fine performance from the young from yeah. the man was particularly very good for the warriors it's been the story sadly jordan mm -hmm. Poe had 38 massive points for the warriors this morning but not enough and that spells out the defensive frailties this season yes they look good but steph curry is out indefinitely yeah. so jordan Poe has to step into the shoes and try as much as possible to get in the points he was good on the night mm. 38 points but defensively the warriors were quite poor and that's what we're seeing how close the margins were holistically but it was good to see the Malera put up a fight performance for the Warriors well I think I've given up on them right because I've seen the performances over time they don't look like a team that's ready to qualify for the next round of this competition they look like an ordinary team you know just playing like that they don't even play like defending champions sadly so that's what the story over time you know for the Warriors but kudos to the Malera had a triple double and that should make sense. Well, let's look at the D Detroit Pistons and what you've seen on your screen. Yeah. It's about the Detroit Pistons doing the magic. It was Duran who had a um, good 14 points in this particular game. Jay Allen also had 20 points in this game. But you look at it, it was a slum for the Detroit Pistons, but a good win for Cleveland Cavaliers. Decent performance has been for some of the lads. You look at um, Paige Washington also being part of the mix for the Hornets, but Duran Mar Marizona. Decent yeah. game was good result. Well, I think the Pistons, this is just the same story. They've been struggling all season, mm. right? And then you can imagine, you know, what happened on the night for them. It's been a case of um, their belly gets to 100 points mark. They had 85 yesterday, you know, and that shows you how much, how, how poor they've been so far this season. And imagine when your biggest performer is just a Duran. It shows you quality. So that's the story. Like, well, let's talk about what's happening with 76ers. 76ers yeah. got so close to the 100 mark but they couldn't hit it. 99 points it was for the 76ers, but good win for the Celtics, the Boston Celtics, having 106 points in this particular game. Dominant performance, especially when the Celtics are at home and they showed this class. It had to be James Harden. Harden having just 26 points for the 76ers. Not good enough comparatively, but there was a name, D. White also had 19 points for yeah. the Celtics. Not the biggest of performers, but it has to do with a collection with the Celtics, yeah. but good win for them tonight. Bloody, when, when you want to talk about a properly drew team, yeah. a decent basketball team, it's Boston Celtics. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter who leaves the team, the team performs. No matter who drops, the team performs. 
Jason Tatum, you know, wasn't good on the night for them, you know, but the team performed. Dylan Brown has been rolled out of, you know, the season due to a face injury, but somehow the team gets to win games. And it shows you how good they've been. Imagine defeating the Philadelphia 76ers and then 76ers couldn't even get to 100 points mark. It shows you how much quality this team, be, this team has been and then the fact that they play as a unit, yeah. defend as a unit, attack as a unit, and of course, you know, the aim is to get us points in. That's basically why they're the best in the season because of the fact that they play like a properly good NBA team. She does them like I just cannot say much about this team because clearly they're fantastic. Marizona is in love with the Bolton, Bolton Celtics side. <laughs> decent, decent team, you must say. Especially when you have 39 wins this season. The best record this season are for the Bolton uh, Boston Celtics. Decent team. They've had just a few losses, 16 losses this season, but quite decent a team. When all the superstars are out, they still have a way to win a strong team like 76ers. We draw the curtain on NBA this moment. And when we open the curtain, guess what happens? It's going to be a football story all around the world. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon. Welcome back to Sports Central. My name is Vladimir Kem. My zona is still here. I have him for keeps this time. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> what a company he's made, Marizona. Yeah, definitely. Let me start by saying thank you for being on the show again. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for looking this good on the show today. And thank you for helping us rock and roll. Oh, well, uh, we have to do justice to what's in the plate. But his football stories and the big stories in the world of football, beginning from the home front, would be that that's happening in Nigeria. The IMC has come out to say, that hitting a ban on El Kenami Warriors. El Kenami Warriors had a decent, decent time, recent times, but there was a clash in March day five. Um, in a game, they took on the leaders of that group, Bendel Insurance. Disappointingly, the IMC have said the security in the stadium was not adequate, and not just adequate, was not effective. So they're banning them and slamming them with 750,000 naira. Also, they've been slammed with playing behind closed doors at the stadium for the rest of the first half of the season. Mari, we talked about the IMC. Good stuff, good stuff. And what can say IMC are working? Well, um, they are cooking too. Okay. You know, we, had, we had this conversation over radio just a couple of weeks ago. Clearly, you're cooking and kudos to Benga Leg mm. I like the fact that he's matching words with action, basically. And we've seen the stories come through. And then right now, we're seeing that it's not just a case of a slap on the wrist. We've seen and I'll try to ban, you know, on stadium. And of course, um, the fact that, you know, fans do not get to you know, see these games, it makes a lot of sense. And of course, the fine to come in as well. I think I like it basically. Kudos to the IMC, you know, for making sure that all of this is brought to book basically. And it makes a lot of sense for me. And also, they've also made sure that, um, you know, uh, any any team whose stadium has not met capacity, yeah. met standard, you know, you, you ask to play your Are your Warriors being part of it? Basically, uh, shooting stars, shooting stars as well. And then you ask to play in any other venue. So it'll, it'll actually, you know, facilitate you know, the re renovation of these stadiums and it makes a lot of sense for me. So because curiosity. I actually have come out to say it, these stadiums or yeah. stadia yeah. are not good for television. Definitely. So for us to get the league to the highest level mm. where it's televised, you, you ought to operate on a good stadia, a good yeah. pitch. Yeah. And that's been the concern. Right now, what's happening could be a pointer to what could happen in the nearest future. Mm. But let's look at this particular case, what happened in Arizona. Mm. It was a state, um, the context of it was this. They said they did not have adequate and effective security. Remember the case that happened with um, Bielsa United? Yeah, Bielsa United. The story right. was, Bielsa United came out to say... Um, we provided 30 policemen yeah, and all of that. we provided 35 policemen. 35 policemen, rather. Instead of 30 that you require. Yeah. So it could be adequate in one way, in terms of the numbers from yeah, that standpoint. but effective. But the thing is, you had 35 policemen. Yeah. What were they doing? Yeah. The referee was still beaten. Yeah, that's so it the ought thing. to be effective. Definitely. You know, when I saw that, you know, uh, the... the, uh, the the statements by mm. the Bioso United, you know, media officer, and I'm asking to myself, so if 
you provided 35 placement you didn't just go, tell to, them to, to go stand there and watch the game mm -hmm. what should be you know their duty the duty is to protect the match officials so of course the blame will still come on you if after providing 35 policemen there's a security, security breach and that's the story so kudos to the imc for you know putting up a no-nonsense attitude because this is the kind of attitude mpfl clubs in because over time we see the stories hooliganism was almost a part of the game you know it was almost impossible to travel to go out to, to watch a game where you don't see fans you know perpetrate violence and right now it's good that the imc are making sure that all of that is reduced to the best thing and i think it makes a lot of sense for me kudos to the imc and i hope they continue like this on a more consistent basis my to talk to us about what's happening with um the super eagles of nigeria regarding the qualifiers that's coming up yeah it's the 2023 african cup of nations qualifiers and big picture would be that the super eagles will be taking on guinea Bissau in morocco give us an outlook of the team what's yeah. been happening with the team look recent times we've seen a bad form from the super eagles yeah, of basically. nigeria yeah. yeah in terms of the qualifiers they've been pretty decent had a few wins had beaten guinea at the time mm. um beaten um what's the other team uh principal yeah. yeah, principal yeah. yeah but in terms of high profile friendly i've got a game it's going to be something yeah. it's a double header game particularly mm -hmm. you know for the qualifiers for the african 2023 and then this game was supposed to play was supposed to be played in guinea bissau right but Kaf has said that no stadium in guinea bissau is up to standard yeah. so now guinea bissau have to travel to morocco to play that home game against nigeria and mm -hmm. of course the, the reverse feature comes up four four days later at the mq abila stadium you know at in abuja particularly so that's the story but guinea bissau you know failed an appeal you know to play that game at their home at their home country and that's just a story we're looking forward to seeing how Pesero approaches games like this because over time he's barely convinced us with the kind of tactics the kind of players to bring into the team we're yet to see improvement and development and progress in the national team so games like this would afford us the opportunity to watch Pesero and to gauge the quality of the national team in a long while we'll get to talk more about nigeria's qualifiers with guinea bissau but let's move straight to another nigerian story looking at a top striker in Italy, his name is Victor Osimen. Napoli president has come out to say Victor Osimen is not for sale. We've heard Manchester United are projecting £107 million for the striker. Chelsea also are in conversation looking forward to the summer. But Napoli president Marizona said, this man is not for sale. We want to build something big in Napoli. Mm. Well, there's no way you have a youngster, a fantastic football player like Victor Osimen. Mm. In your word, explosive, but you want to sell him basically very explosive very explosive particularly and then and then napoli right now look like a team that can actually compete favorably for titles in europe with the way they're playing mm -hmm. and then they've also gotten in some fine footballers varacelli has come into the team he's done a fantastic job you know giovanni simeone diego simeone's son yeah. doing a fantastic job frank and gisa the cameroonian playing he made few for them he's done a fantastic job as well so the team right now spalit is beating what could turn out to be a dominant team in this area and he doesn't want any core member of that team to leave so in as much as we've seen you know bids for victor simon from united from chelsea from psg and the rest of them you know you know um the already is saying well i want this man in my team because napoli can also become psg mm. depending on how we build the team and they start to keep it a key man like victor simon well to keep the biggest stars you have you have to have a lot of funding yeah that's the way it is um the president has come out to say they don't have they're not in debt yeah so right now they want to keep the big stars but yeah. on the other hand many are thinking it could just be a tempting statement because United have come out. Napoli yeah. kept the price tag at a time at 130 million yeah, pounds. 30 million pounds. And yeah. United came out, say, come on, we have 107 million pounds. Mm. Well, but it's still a long way to the summer. Yeah. And probably the statement from the president could be, your money's not enough. We're telling you, keeping this player, step up the bid. Maybe. Just step up the bid. Yeah, I think I think this 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 stance, you know, by uh, De Laurenti is not going to deter football clubs who want Sano Simen. It will just make them improve the bid. Yes. It's a natural thing. You know, we saw what happened with um, Enzo Fernandez at Benfica. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, Rui Costa, the president of Benfica, kept saying Enzo Fernandez is not for sale. He's not for sale. But teams kept increasing the offer. Mm -hmm. And that's the story. It's the same story for Mikhailo Mudrik. You know, so I think all of this will just, you know, facilitate, motivate these teams to improve the offer. Maybe price even around 150 million pounds or thereabouts. So that's the story. But I think it will make a lot of sense if uh, the Simen says with Napoli gets help them helps them to build consistency and become a dominant team in not just Serie but in Europe. Last on those Simen story and Napoli. Yeah. The last time we saw Napoli win the Serie A was in 1989, mm. 1990 season, mm. and Diego Armando Maradona was part of that mix, leading the team to win it. Mm. In recent times, the last two seasons, we've seen Napoli do the magic early season, move forward. Afterwards, they drop on the ranks. Mm. This season is a 13 points caution so far ahead of Inter Milan who are placed second yeah. and a 16-point caution 
ahead of Roma who are placed third. Well, I think and they go all out and win this one. Well, I think right now the onus is on them, yeah. basically. And of course, they've got everything. They've got good form right now. Mm. They've got momentum. They have the players. And they've got fans. They've got everything in their favor working for them to get that title. Because right now, Nap um, AC Milan are not consistent. Same story for Inter Milan. They're not consistent too. So these two teams who would have acted as competition for Napoli are not doing well. 13 points gap right now. That's enough for a team to go to win a title. I think it's on Napoli right now. If they drop form, it's on them. The shame would be on them. But I don't think so because look at the way they play. They look explosive. They play like a fantastic team. A team with the right mentality, the right energy, the right momentum. That's the story for Napoli this season. And I think all things really cool, they have this title in the bag. Well, according to my zone and Napoli looks explosive, the big question would be, does Manchester United seem explosive? Yesterday, Manchester United at Old Trafford took on Leeds United, but it didn't come out the way they planned. Before the game, many punters thought it was going to go the way of Manchester United. But Leeds United, they dropped their coach, Jesse March. New coach taking over. And the young lads, the Americans, turning up to the party. Tyler Adams, as well as McKinney, turning up to the party. Early in Old Trafford, it was too massive zero. But Manchester United need, needed to do that comeback in that one, but couldn't raise, raise a three massive points in that game. Sad story from a Manchester United point yeah, of view. Yeah. A good story from a Leeds United point of view. But there are some disappointments here and there from both ends, Mari. Well, um, first up, um, I think United had no ch had no had no thing to do considering two goals, considering the first minute goal. Leeds United had no manager, and we're going through a state of confusion. It that, had to be Wilfred Norton. Yeah, that young star has been explosive. Talking about explosive. It was a deadline signing in the summer. Yeah, and makes sense. Quite Coming fantastic. From PSV. Quite fantastic. Decent, decent. No, it reminds me of an Aguero in his prime fantastic a striker basically but for united it's good that um, they gradually came back one thing that was lacking in united's game was the mental ability to come back from games and we saw that yesterday he came from two goals in the second half and then they scored two good to see jenna sancho get himself back and try yeah. he's been going through a lot of cycle to well battles. Play. yeah was, was going through a lot of cycle, cycle came in battles. the second half and bang scored the scored goal a fantastic goal particularly so it was good to see united get this win but i still remain uh, i still actually would say that united had no nothing they shouldn't have considered two goals in that game. Yeah. That was the game that they should have won. Pile of the pressure on Arsenal and continue to dream of winning a title this season. Because I mean, look at look the at that. United seemed to miss Casimiro in that game. Seemed yeah. to miss Ericsson. Sabitzer mm. had his first game. Yeah. pretty decent one way or the other, but wasn't good enough. Yeah, I think I think Sabitzer was just going through a state of integration. It's yeah. difficult because he's coming in in January. He's slotted into the eleven right immediately. So there's a lot to be expected from you. There's a lot on your shoulder, especially when you're replacing the Casemiro who, mm. who keeps the standard up there. You know, so that's the story. But I think United should move on from Casemiro. Yes, he's a key player, but what happens when he's out like this? You have to have a backup plan, a contingency plan. And that should be the story for Eric Ten Hag. One other outlook from a United point of view yes. is this. Five games that Vegas has played. Mm. They've been able to win one. In this game, they look really sloppy in the first half, yeah. with Vec Vegas being part of that mix. They won the game against Crystal Palace. Yeah. And the criticism is beginning to come. The question would be, should Eric Ten Hag continue with this player moving forward? Well, the thing is, first off, Wood Vegas is a short term Especially in the startup. Vegas is a short term option, yeah. right? And then, you know, he, he although he, he, he slows down their game, but of course, he comes in and gives them some attacking edge. That's the story. He wasn't he wasn't coming in to become a key player. He was supposed to be a squad player for United and give them some tactical dynamics. Well, everything has is not making him a, a squad player. He's yeah, starting well, games well, as a concern. Sadly, I, I think and that, when he plays, it changes the dynamic of the team. I think sadly it's just an emotional. Because, because a, they equalized. Yeah. They were able to equalize the moment they withdrew him. Definitely. I think sadly it's an emotional conversation with Ten Hag. Maybe he fancies Wood Vegas yeah. so much that you know sometimes he doesn't see the fact that he slows them down but mm. particularly. But I think yesterday's game was clear. Relationship was a clear indication that this man should not be starting games for United. Maybe coming as a sub option, basically coming, putting the heads, the uh, the area boss as, as much as possible, and get the goals in. But United look to me like a properly decent team, and I hope they continue like this. Well, disappointingly, from a Leeds United point of view, the last time Leeds United had a decent result, massive three points at Manchester United was in 1980s. They got to Old Trafford, had the early 2-0. They couldn't keep it and seemed to be same old, same old story. Not being able to keep the result, though being decent on the field. But away from all the United stories and the difficulties and peculiarities with Manchester United, Real Madrid had a decent result at a club World Cup, which took place in Rabat, Morocco yesterday, taking on Al Ali of Egypt. Massive 4-1, showing dominant in class. Vinicius Jr. underscored it.
injury that Zuma was in part of that match, but I've talked about the Zuma being available in that next game on Saturday against Al Hilal of the Ongizala Spain, Marizona. Yeah. We talked about it yesterday. Mm. Difficult game. It was presumed to be, but Al Ali won all matches for Real Madrid. Four goals for one is two, and it was a piece of yellow card for yeah. both of those goals for. Well, Rodrigo mm-hmm. being part of that. Yeah, match. Rodrigo Sergio adding back a young star playing for the Castilla team. We're talking about Vinicius Zuma getting a goal as well. It was it was a good performance for Real Madrid. You know, but um, I think the, it can give them a lot more intense for them because I don't think Ali Lau will just want to roll the carpet for them and let them get to win. The Gallo will definitely want to upset the big guns, definitely. And I think that would make a lot of sense, you know, later on Saturday when they play the final. I'm expecting them to put on fine performance. Well, Madrid are objective favourites to get this thing, yeah. but if possible, they say it's nothing. And that should be the conversation. Impossible, they say it's nothing in football. Also in life, impossible, it's nothing. Marzola, we can continue the show. Yeah, sadly. Yeah. But it will be impossible to continue. And I'm so happy to play. Well, um, thank you for being Time flies when you're having sports. You know, I had fun. I mean, I didn't know it, it was a retirement. But then, once again, you look like um, an apostle of the gospel. <laughs> apostle of sports. Oh, nice. Thank yeah. you for being part of the show. Yeah, thank you.